Welcome back, Disc Golf fans. This is Derek Skull and Chris German. We are Gatekeeper Media, and we are bringing you the round two front nine coverage of the 2019 303 Open. Uh, this is a, an event presented by Disc Mania. They've got a lot of a lot of stuff going on this year. It's really exciting to see some of that going on. And as always, this coverage is powered by Millennium Golf Discs. Yeah, Dismania actually, uh, their headquarters is in Colorado now, so not too far. Yeah, about there. an hour north or so from where this event takes place. So we have an exciting card. We have Joe with a two-stroke lead right now sitting at 14 under, under the young gun, Eagle McMahon. We have Luke Humphreys, uh, surprised there, had a pretty hot round at 11 under. And MJ sitting at eight, but... Still a lot of work for him, but he's on this lead card. I'm excited to see him play. Well, I know that I'm ready to tune in <laughs> for some disc golf swagger. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's see if Joe, how many walk-offs Joe can have uh, this round. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we're going to move into hole one. This is a par four coming in at 619 feet. Uh, really, on your first shot, you want to throw a pretty standard hyzer. There is OB on that right side fairway, so if you pump it too hard, you could go OB long. Second shot, uh, another hyzer shot usually. You kind of want to hit this gap that the drone is going through. There is OB right to the right, pretty close within circle's edge. So Yeah, and, and luckily if you know, you're know you hitting that OB from your second shot, you basically, I, I said this before, but you got to tap in for your par. Usually, yeah, something that's at least in, in the circle. So Joe's going to start it off on the box. He had a really good round one. Made that crazy eagle on 17. Yeah, what a drive. Yeah. As everyone would know, Eagle McMahon. Looking really good. <laughs> yeah, really cooking it, and uh, he, he's graced with some skip action going on, too. I would say if, if you're getting by that dirt, dirt that's right there, you're in a good spot. Yeah, if you're anywhere close to where it starts dipping back down and, like, lowering. Now this, mm, that's a little tough. You're kind of... Footing's going, a little weird. Yeah, it's going to be a little weird for Luke. Uh, and as a righty, your your kind of pullback is right up yeah. against all that stuff. He's going to have to have a lot of power to try to throw a hyzer that's going to hit the green from there. And MJ, just textbook pretty, shot. Yeah, pretty textbook. So it looks oh, like so he's going to have to go forehand. Yeah. yeah, it looks like he thought it was a, a little bit more in front of it, but I guess not. He's going to try to go over the left, which that's really tough because, as you can see, the trees are a little bigger on that side. Um, wow. I actually went OB to the right. Yeah, that carried a lot. I'm excited cool. to see how MJ kind of plays on this more open course, being known as a, a carver through the woods. So we'll see how he... So we see that this location <laughs> is pretty familiar. Uh, we saw uh, Mr. Revere make his, uh, his awesome putt from there. Yeah, almost Around identical one. spot. Yeah. Big Heiser shot from Joe and... Take a little bit of skip hop there, and he's about circle's edge. Eagle is lining up. Grenade. Yeah. <laughs> and, you wow. know. Doing what he does. Yeah. So, Luke, this will be for his four. But like I was saying, a pretty, pretty standard... Ooh. Well, I guess I spoke too soon, but traditionally that length should be a pretty standard putt for most touring pros out there. Great putt from MJ. I guess that's just like a sweet spot on the course, right? Yeah. This is a pretty decent putt for Joe, and he capitalizes. He's going to run that one out. You could tell he was a little... That was definitely a tester for him. It's not an easy putt. Eagles... Doesn't have a lot of space there. No. A little kind of awkward for him. Kind of battling the branches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's going to step to the other side. That looks... That a little looks more better. opened up, yeah. Yeah. Got to get everything just right. Yeah. A routine's a routine. One thing feels off. You ain't gonna make that putt. Eagle's gonna take his three, so we have three birdies and unfortunately a bogey for Luke. Who I Could believe is a pro discus player. Yes. Um, 
I mean, I've said this before, but jitters, maybe? Round one jitters? Camera jitters. We don't see him on, on camera too often. He has been a touring pro. So. No, and, and we have heard camera jitters are quite real. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to move into the second hole. This is a par three. There is OB right behind the basket to the left and to the right. So this is all about a nice <laughs> finesse shot. Yeah. Usually throw a putter, something that's kind of going to turn a little bit. And, and again, as you can see, you are working with a raised basket. So if, you know, the, the wind starts gusting a little bit, that's going to add a lot of extra difficulty to this approach. Eagle finds a different route, tries to throw it over the wires, <laughs> and parks it. Crazy. With such skill. Yep. And that's just outside. That's going to be a pretty tough putt. He is pretty uh, pin high, so he's not going to be putting down to any OB or anything. Nice out of the hand from Luke. Oh, Set. Yep. Okay. All right. Everyone is in the circle. I was going to say, I wow. feel pretty confident about uh, about his putting on this. Yeah. Anytime there's a raised basket, though, that comes into play, and that definitely throws you yeah. off. Yeah, your, your uh, line of sight. Ooh. So Luke is starting to find himself some bad luck. Yeah, early hitting, on. Hitting chains, just not being able to capitalize on a, a solid connection there. Joe had that great shot. And if you're going to be anywhere, I would say putting up to the raised basket. I don't know. I just I find it more comfortable putting up as opposed to putting down. I feel like you, you have a little bit more control if you have an upward push for your shot. Whereas throwing downward, it could carry away yeah. a lot easier. Great putt from Joe. So once again, we just have Luke preventing us from a star frame, but these three guys are off to a really good start. Still early in the round, so yeah. he's got time to bounce back. I mean, we saw with uh, Peter... And from round one, he had a rough start in the beginning, the first three holes, and he really kept it together, yeah. shot even for the rest. Now, while we're here, I do want to highlight Joe Revere. Um, during this round, our tee times did change yeah. during this one, and specifically because he was nominated for Teacher of the Year. Congrats, yeah, if you didn't, if congrats you didn't, to you, Joe. Yeah, if you didn't know, I saw some people have some comments at round one, like, oh, what does Joe do that he could do that? And he is a science teacher. Yeah. <laughs> Robotics, I believe. I believe so, yeah. So hole three coming in at about 600 feet. This is another par four. This one, you just really want to throw a really big flex shot. It, it does go downhill. Um, these guys were landing about 75% down the fairway. Um, from there, you should have a pretty traditional layup from there. You can kind of go up and over everything, or you can go right down the gut. I was going to say, it's probably safe to assume that Joe's going to go and elect for a flex shot. To so get watch most this. Of his distance. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I would Very. say that maybe about a foot away from you. Yeah, that one was close. Line yet, of fire. I've yet to be in hit. Knock on wood. I've yet to be in hit. So Eagles, his just kind of holds that turn. He's kind of in the same spot he was last time. Yeah, but we all know how that worked <laughs> out for him last time. So we'll see if he can uh, make some magic again. MJ's similar line to Eagles. This looks a little more stable. I think he'll fight back. Oh, yeah. Now, he had made a comment to me when we were walking up to the positioning here that uh, on round one, his drive on this hole was probably a good 30 to 40 feet further than the where, where he just landed really yeah and he he was like oh that's me all the way up here i don't throw oh. that far oh look at luke <laughs> probably about there actually yeah. is where he was wow i don't know what it is it's just that it's that altitude it's less friction in the air these these discs really really glide look at that it's gonna be a tester for joe coming back but we've seen him make it before 
Eagle's basically almost in the same spot. I think he's a little closer. Still haven't been hit. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a tough putt for Eagle, too. So these guys, I don't know if they're just kind of being aggressive or... Standard layup. Yeah, that's kind of what I would expect. It's just an easy layup. There was a lot of branches to, to come into play, so why risk it? And Luke. Ooh. Just drops down. That was a good run. I mean, at that point, go for the eagle. You're that far down the fairway. Yeah, and having back-to-back -back bogeys at this point. This is moving day, so... Ooh. Eagle, unfortunately, catches the bottom left of the basket. Talking about routines. Yeah. And that's why you do them. <laughs> yeah, it pays off. And I always find it very interesting when, when uh, players are still examining their, their mechanics as yeah. they're walking up to get the putt. Especially when they made it. Mm -hmm. It's one thing when you miss it and you kind of see them like, oh. Like, well, that just means it just that. didn't feel right. Yeah. It's not part of the muscle memory that they're used to, so it's kind of a lucky break sometimes. That was a good putt from Luke. It's nice to see him kind of stop the bleeding and, and get a birdie. MJ. Turkey for MJ. Turkey for Joe. Good start for these guys. Eagle does have to take his par. Moving into hole four, 763 feet. Par four, this one, you kind of want to land where the drone is going now. If you're Eagle McMahon, you're trying to get to the basket. Uh, but once again, it's another big flex shot. So pull out distance driver and just really, really pump it. Goes downhill as well. Yeah, when I played this, I had, uh, you know, as a right-handed player, I had elected to go with, like, a flick mm. drive. You could do that, kind of land where Joe is. Mm -hmm. So you can see Joe didn't really push it too hard. That was more about placement for him. Why overexert yourself when you know that the outcome is going to be the same with your stroke count? You yeah, know? If, you, if you know you're going to get down there and take a three, why try to chew off that extra 100 feet, 200 feet? Yeah, especially with wide open approaches for the most part. And this is getting too stable for Luke. There is OB over there, so you do have to be careful. Uh, he didn't get to it, but that was a that was a pretty popular place to go. Yeah, kind of where those trees are over there. Yeah, they're yeah. really well placed. I really enjoyed this hole. And Our third camera guy lost a disc in there day one. Yeah, Eagles. Pumping that, yes. Whew. Okay. He made the adjustment from round one, and he is circle two. Putting for eagle. It's an amazing upshot by MJ. So Michael Joe is looking to be four under through four. And Mr. Joe Revere. Yeah, see, he knew exactly what he needed to get there. So, it would inside. have been nice if it sat. But yeah. Still inside the circle. Not a, not a bad spot to be. Luke finds a way. Just Ooh. didn't plant it to the ground. So we had three people in round one, uh, card eagles. So I'm excited to see how many we might see today. This is really our first big attempt. Did that kiss chain? Yeah. Strong side too. Just, I guess was just a little wide. Oh. Again with the bad luck for Luke. So that's three out of four for Luke. That's been splash outs. It's kind of like the round I played today. <laughs> Joe is looking to keep that birdie streak alive. Knocks it in. 
<laughs> with force. Yeah. He's sitting at 18 under now. Hole five coming in at 538 feet, another par four. This one's a little shorter for sure, um, but much more challenging, smaller fairway. And if you want to be aggressive, you will be punished for it if you do try to reach the green from the tee box. Yeah, it's pretty pretty narrow fairway and it zigzags quite a bit. Yeah, so most people do kind of what Joe is doing here. You just want to throw a straight to hyzer shot, kind of land right on that fairway, something that you're going to trust. Um, and it is nice to be kind of flirting with that OB line where he landed because it's going to give you more of an open approach because you're going to be able to see the pin a little easier from there. Oh, yeah. If you go a little too deep on the right side, you can pinch yourself. and You're going to have Col to go up and over. Colton kind of had to do that in round yeah. one. So Michael Joe, that was pretty close. But like you said, it's a good spot to be. So we'll, let's see if Eagle is going to make the adjustment from what he tried from round one. Uh, he, he landed round one. He got in it for on round one from this drive. This one just held that line. That's going to mm -hmm. go OB. But maybe it might have even popped out on the other side of that. That would have been something, right? And the yeah. next thing you know, he's only 15 feet away. Yeah. And Luke, I would, that's a perfect spot to be. Yep, needed that. We're going to see probably a lot of forehand approaches. Yeah, nothing fancy, yeah. nothing aggressive. Yeah, this is an interesting hole. It's kind of like a like a tweener, pretty easy par four, but I think it's a really hard par three. Um, so I would like to see if maybe they move the basket back or maybe move it a little closer and just make it a par three. Um, yeah, I was going to say you can't. You're not going to be able to move it back. Oh yeah, because we have the fairway <laughs> of the the next hole. Of the next hole, yeah. Yeah, this is the part of the course that's a little on the tighter side of where mm -hmm. the fairways are, and then back nine really opens up, and it's a beautiful thing. Because, again, um, you know, just to kind of call attention to it, we are playing a combination of two different courses. So it's been a, a modification that they've been kind of perfecting over the years. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, th I oh, think it no. plays well. I agree. Uh, we do something very similar here in Philly with the Philly Open, where Sedgley Woods is a very small, tight course, and they actually safari style create their own layout. And I love when courses are able to do that, and TDs adapt and kind of make that happen. MJ, five, three, five for five. Quite a streak. Yeah. Good but are you surprised? Luke. No, not, <laughs> not at all. Not for any of these guys. I am a little surprised Eagle. I mean, it was unlucky he missed that putt, but he's going to be the only one taking the par. Or actually, no, he went OB. He's going to be taking the bogey. So we move into hole six. This place is kind of a peninsula island hole. There is um, a spot to land on the left side if you want to be safe. But all these guys, I kind of expect to kind of run this and, and try to park something. Yeah, and traditionally, you're going to stay go the, the route here like Joe did. Um, he knew that that was not what he was looking for right out of the hand, but it still worked yeah. out for him, uses that hill as a backstop. Yeah, because it's you you know it's going to fade to the left, so you it's almost like a bailout. Mm -hmm. You can bail out. Or uh, MJ likes to go right up the gut here because oh, yeah. he's going to just attack the pin. Yeah, he's going to throw something forward. right at the pin and probably park it. Damn Didn't near lie. Yeah, damn near close. Interesting to see what Luke will do here. It looks, looks like, like he, up the gut as well. Yeah, it looks like he has some type of putter. Oh, no. Ooh. Yeah, and that goes, that goes OB. When something like that happens, sometimes you just got to step back, breathe it in, recollect yourself, and move forward. So this is interesting. I believe Eagle went backhand 
round Spike one. Heiser, round yeah. one. And yeah. now he goes forehand. So it's interesting. I like how those trees are placed, and basically you have three different shots you can take. Mm -hmm. It allows you to kind of work up your up the gut, forehand Heiser, backhand Heiser. There's a handful of holes on this course that can play to any type of player's strong suits for sure. Mm -hmm. Which which is nice for, you know, if you're trying to orchestrate like a battle situation, much like we're seeing right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he knew off the hand. He almost, he almost did it again. <laughs> almost the same thing. I feel. Are we watching round one again? That's what it feels like. Everyone's landing in the same spots. MJ though, he Six. is continuing. Double turkey. Yeah, he's on. He's on fire. Whew. Eagles. It's gonna feel good for him though. He's gonna get the stroke back on Joe after just giving it away. You can kind of tell he was a little adamant after that. You better get in there. Luke's going to take the four. I'm going to take a quick look at Eagle. One of the highest rated in the world. 1050, I think this is the first time he's ever reached that milestone. And yeah, it happened this season. Yeah. It's always a blast filming him. And we're lucky enough to have him pop off a couple times. So, Let's see if we get that again. Hole seven, 785 feet par four. This personally is my favorite hole. There is a mando to the left, those uh, wires. So you have to stay to the right of that. You're going to land kind of around where the drone is. And then you have this awesome green, uh, island green, actually that is farther than you think you definitely really have to pump <laughs> it to get to it um but yeah a really beautiful hole and we're going to start getting to the spot where it's going to start opening up because they kind of make that loop back to where hole one is mj it looks like you might not have been expecting where that was coming from I, huh? no it's a good roll and that's basically where you want to be Oh no. Right into the ground. Um, he is green though, so he's lucky that he didn't go past the, the Mando, but that might be tough. We're gonna have to see if he's kinda pinched to the left and has to kinda throw out and then take another shot, or it looked like it went pretty short. Joe. Didn't quite get the distance that MJ did. No, but get through the Mando. That's It'll the most play. important thing. I'm excited to see if Joe's going to attack the green and try to reach it from there. Luke's low. This needs a skip. Good skip. And that's good, too. <laughs> Very good. Funny enough, I actually thought the other pole was the Mando oh, wow. the whole time. This is This is tough. Yeah. Looks like grenade. It was hard to tell. I couldn't quite see his grip. That's tough. So after two shots, he's basically where MJ is. Luke's gonna lay up. Smart, smart move. If you know you can't make it there, like I said, it looks closer, but. I think these guys have played enough rounds where they really do know that distance. Joe, though, he wants it. And he's going to get it. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a crush. Michael Joe, this is fading. This needs to get down. Oh, oh no. Birdie streak is over for MJ. It's a good run, though. Six down through six. An eagle. <laughs> Makes it look so easy. Luke with 
the forehand approach. Kind of seems like Luke is very comfortable with this forehand. I've noticed him really go to that a lot. Ooh. So still shows up the putt, even though it is. Uh, yeah, that's a good save. Let's give it to him. Run. Let's let's rewind that for you. I, th I feel like we need to give MJ some praise here. And then <laughs> six down through six goes OB and still saves his par. And I do believe he got hurt in the season. We haven't really seen a lot of him this year. I do believe he got injured kind of early on. Um, I'm excited to see kind of how the rest of the season turns out for him. See him up on the leaderboards a little bit more. Joe's able to find his birdie. Gonna move into hole eight, the only par five on the course. A monster! It's a monster. Almost, a, almost a thousand feet. You want to let from from the uh, the men's tees. You're gonna want to kind of land around where the pin was that we just flew over, so that your approach can be uh, kind of going up here. But you notice that we do have water on the right, and we do have the uh, OB on the other side of the fence as well. There's also OB to the left, so a lot of OB on this course. It's Joe, like you said, just kind of. Drop that right down. All about placement. You're not throwing anything crazy. Probably a putter. Yeah, you don't really have a lot of room to open it up here. No. And MJ's. Oh, no. That's the second time in a row he's going to go out of bounds. Well, happens to everybody. It's yeah. how, how you bring yourself back from it. And I would say, I think I've said this in the first round, but uh, the OB is very fair here. I think how they kind of lined everything out and designed it um, for being a two-course layout combined into one, I think they did a really good job. Well, and I like how there are some, some instances where you play with your relief from where it went out of bounds, and then there's some where if you do not make uh, any inbounds contact, from the tee, you you go from a drop zone, mm -hmm. so it's it is a nice mixture. So you get to see a lot of different um, you know styles of play. Eagle just crushing it, and if you're getting to the top of that hillside on your second shot, and you can see the pin for your third, that's a great spot. Some people won't see the basket. I don't think MJ is going to be able to see the basket from there. Um, so that's basically a blind shot for your third shot. Yeah, that's when you just kind of point in the general direction and <laughs> throw the touch shot. Joe's, it's going to fade. That's okay. OB's on the other side of that cart path, so that cart path is in bounds. It's good to see that not all paths are automatically OB as well. Mm -hmm. It's usually the assumption. Luke's going to crush this forehand. And drops down. I don't know if you saw it, but he was kind of down by the fence. So we have a shotgun with MJ, and he did exactly what you said. Just throw it in that general direction. Throw yeah. something you trust. and It's a putter shot, basically. Yeah. Something that you know will sit right when it lands. Luke looked like he pulled that a little bit. He does make it over. Should be a putt for him, yeah. but with the uh, unlucky characteristics of the chains he's been seeing, who knows? Yeah, a lot of action at the green for these guys. Joe. Ooh. Feeling a little froggy. Yeah. He was playing with that OB on the backside. Eagles third shot. in a lot of room uh, as we remember around one eagle had a really tough time on this hole. i think he three putted actually one of the few blemishes he had yeah but that was what helped uh, joe you know pull forward and if you think about it that two stroke difference really came from this hole yeah joe some swagger swag oh no chain through
Well, I think it's cool that I, I'm throwing the Scorpius just for the simple fact that they produce them. It's a disc that's very similar to the Destroyer. It has a really similar feel since it was based off of the original Destroyers. It's just uh, not as overstable. I would say for for guys that don't have as much power, this is this is basically you know a long range multi purpose shooter, whether it be backhand or forehand. This disc was vital right off the bat. All right, moving into hole nine, last hole for the front nine. Nice little easy par three after having that par five. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of where you can recollect yourself. Yeah, so as long as you don't do anything crazy, um, there's not really any OB you have to worry about. This should be a gimme. And you can just about see the band from the tee box. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so it isn't blind. You definitely know where you're throwing. But it is and, uphill. Yeah, it is uphill. There is a chance for rollaways. You can kind of roll into the little It's like a little bushes. bush, yeah. yeah. Uh, where, that, yeah where the telephone pole is. Mm-hmm. Everyone's electing just go with a nice big hyzer shot. Like Eagles uh, does exactly what we said. The roll into the bush. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Not distance-wise, but just moving space. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to be on one knee straddling probably. And that didn't make contact until pin high. That almost actually went in. A good shot from Luke. Ooh. A little low, but yeah. sinks it nonetheless. But you can see here, MJ had a really good round, or a really good front nine. A lot of green on his uh, scorecard. Eagle, no. Just couldn't get the height out of it. Joe's in for his two. Luke's going to be in for his two. No eagle preventing the star frame. Wow. So we saw him kind of have the struggles in the middle of the round last time. You can almost, he almost feels, he doesn't seem as confident with his putting today. I think I'm laughing. I think Joe uh, realized he was going to walk in front of me. <laughs> so he ducks underneath. Luke's going to tap that in. So he had a pretty rough start, but Luke definitely picked it up there. He's going to walk off in fashion. So that's going to be the end of our front nine as we see MJ, Joe, and Eagle all putting up pretty solid rounds. All these guys are really starting to pull away from the rest of the the rest of the crew out there. Yeah, this is the type of golf that I love to, to watch. Just a lot of top performances coming from these top pros. Yeah, a lot of green on those scorecards. I love seeing that. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, make sure you come back for back nine coverage of round two of the 2019 303 Open presented by Dismania. Yeah, go ahead and uh, smash that like button, ring that bell. Stay tuned with all of our coverage that's coming at you soon. Later, folks.